Welcome back to Surviving and Thriving, where we share with you the things that we have learned as we have transitioned our family from struggling to survive sickness and disease to thriving and living life to the fullest, right smack dab in the midst of it. And we share these things in the hope that something that we share with you will help you and enlighten you and encourage you as you transition your family from struggling to survive disease to thriving and living life to the fullest, right smack dab in the midst of it. Now, are these things we sharing with you gonna be easy? By all means, no, it's gonna be hard when you're dealing with chronic illness, sickness, disease, it is very hard. And if you're in a fight for your life, the very breath for you to be on this earth, you're in, you're in the biggest fight of your life for your life, right? But even if you don't have that life or death issue there, it affects every aspect of your life. And it is a fight of your life for your life in the sense to have a life and the life that you want while you're here on this earth. So this stuff is not easy. However, you can look and you can learn. It is wiser to look and learn than to have to go through the hardships and learn for yourself. There's a lot that comes out of going through hardships and learning for yourself, but it is far better to look and learn and bypass the hardships, right? Now, there are certain things that hold true, no matter what. The principles work. Gravity is gravity no matter what, right? So there are things that you can look and you can listen and you can learn and you can abstract from our experiences and tweak it to fit your life. So it doesn't matter if you're a single parent with one kid, a lot of kid, or if you're a married couple with no kids going through, right, health issues, or if you, you know, are got multi-generations in your home. It doesn't matter what your situation is, certain principles and truths hold true no matter what. So abstract what can help you and tweak it to fit your life, even if you're not like me. Even if you're not like, I'm a married woman with multiple children. If you don't have the same situation, you can still hear and you can still listen and you can still learn. Look and learn is far better than beating your head up against a wall trying to learn. So hopefully you can learn what, what we've gone through. And I share these things with you and I try to be transparent with you because we didn't have that. No one was there to be able to answer our questions or help us with some of the things that we were trying to figure out how to survive and how to thrive in this situation. I couldn't get it from my church. I couldn't get it from my family. I couldn't even get it from people who have already gone through certain things and who were going through. I couldn't abstract that wisdom. So I try to be transparent with you to help you. So you ready? We're gonna talk a little bit um, for a while, a few videos about a lot of stuff that's gonna really help you um, to bring your family through the hardship of it. So the first thing that I want to share with you guys today on this video, for the sake of this video, is we're going to talk about your family and the mindset of your family that's going to set you up to prosper, to move, to set you up to not only to survive the onslaught of what you're going through, but then to move into thriving and having good success. Now, good success does not mean I cannot promise anybody life. I am not God right? I'm fighting for my own. I can't even make my own self live, right? So I can't promise you everybody's going to live. But what I can tell you is that it is a pattern to set you up for success, okay? And to help you to keep your head above water and move into a place of flourishment as you are going through so that when you do get to other sides or whatever other sides may be, even though like I'm not fully on the other side of where I'm trying to go to, but I am on the other side of some crises. And I can say that I'm still enjoying my life and I have a great life, I have a good life in the middle of the hardships and the battles, okay? So what I've learned, now every family structure is different. You can be a strong family before this starts. You can be a family on edge, on shaky ground. It doesn't matter when crisis, sickness, and disease hit a family, and if there's a, especially if there's a life or death matter to it, it will shake the core of your entire family. Everyone, regardless of age, babies feel it, 
children feel it, adults feel it. Everybody is going to be shaken and it's going to stretch you to your max. Okay, we know that financial reasons are like the number one reason for divorce, right? Well, sickness and disease is going to affect your finances. And if people can't handle finances and families can't handle finances without sickness and disease, can you imagine? Well, yeah, you can. You know what I'm talking about, about how many times amplified it is when you're going through health issues on top of that. Because there's a lack of ability to be able to work. There's health issues cost a lot of money a lot of money and to have the money to do all the things that you need to do the time to do all the things that you need it is taxing and it is very hard so regardless of where your family is before on the onslaught of something coming on a health issue coming on it throws your family into a crisis and it's going to tax everybody and it's going to strain every relationship between parent and children, children and children, husband and wife, it doesn't matter. It's going to strain it. But I'm here to tell you, you can get through it. And there are some things that can help you to get through it. Number one, everybody's going to want to blame. You're going to want to blame. I wanted to blame and I did. And I'm going to tell you now, blaming does not help. What it does is help pull you guys apart, cause more wedges, cause baggage and pain that even when you're out of it, it still bothers people years down the road. So the best thing to do is when you feel those things that you want to blame, even if at the time, and let me tell you, there are times where what you see in the middle of a crisis, you perceive it as truth. It is truth to you at that time. But on the other side, you're going to have a different perspective. You're going to be able to see more clearly. So it's better to not blame, even if in your mindset, there's good reason to blame. Even if it's not a situation of crisis, when you get on the other side, you're still going to see reason to blame, right? You're going to have more understanding. So in the middle of it, don't blame. I know on the inside, you're going to be talking to yourself. You're going to be pointing fingers. You're going to be upset with people. But do not blame. It's going to save you on the other side. Okay? And it's going to help your family to stay together and to stick together. And when others are coming to you, blaming you, here's the hard part. Don't take it personal. Because you'll have better understanding on the other side. Because right now, when you're in the middle of muck and mire, it is not easy to see. You can't see clear in muck and mire. You cannot see clear. They can't. Your family around you, they can't see clear either. It's always easier to see clear when you're higher, when you're out of the mess and on the other side. So don't take it personal. Will it hurt? Yes. It will hurt. I'm going to share with you some wisdom that it was given to me. I was going to go into the military. And so I went up on the base and I talked to a whole bunch of young people who had recently got out of basic. And I talked to people on all levels and I asked for wisdom and I asked for instruction and I asked them to help me so I can get a mindset of how to go through. And I had some friends and some people I didn't know and some other people I talked to. And one of these things that they said when you go through basic training is they're going to yell, they're going to scream. That's their job. They said, but don't listen to the tone in which they're talking to you. Don't take offense by the, all the crazy stuff they say to you, but listen for the instruction. And I held on to that. I held on to that. And I still hold on to that today. So when you're going through and your family is blaming and they're getting upset with everything, it's your fault. Right. I can't make money because I got to take care of you. Well, I can't have the life I want kids. Right. I can't go hang out with my friends and I can't do this because of what you're going through. Right. Or here. How about you? Right. I had this setback. I had that because you gave me something I wasn't supposed to eat, but I can't get up and go do it for myself. Right. Or I need to take these things, but you're not giving me giving it to me on the time that I need it. It doesn't matter. Everybody on every side is going to want to blame. But when your family members are upset and they're venting to you, now 
here is what you got to remember. Most times when you're going through, there's not a lot of people you can vent with. Most people get tired of it and don't want to hear it. And then they come up and say crazy stuff to you. Well, you ain't the only person going through stupid stuff. So the only people you all have to vent with is each other because y'all in that house dealing with this war together. It's just y'all. Every now and again, somebody may let you vent, but ain't nobody going to hear you every time you need to vent and you're going to need to vent a lot. Everybody in that house going to need to vent a lot. So when people are coming and they're venting at you and you're the one who's going through and they're releasing and they're upset, keep it in your heart and your mind. They are releasing. They are upset and do your best to not take it personal. Will it hurt? Yes. Will it bother you? Yes. But learn that they're venting and give them that right to vent. And if you vent, still be careful and don't say stuff to hurt them. They got enough they got to deal with. When you're going through and you're the person that's in the health crisis, you got to grow up. You got to be mature, even if you ain't there yet. That means you've got to learn how to hold some stuff and take some stuff. And you got to give them the freedom to be able to vent and not hold it against them. And when they're venting to you, don't take it personal what they're saying. Don't listen at the yelling. Don't listen at the crying. Don't listen at the, it's your fault. But listen to the heart of what they're trying to say. I'm overwhelmed and I don't know how to do this. I'm feeling less than because I don't know how to balance taking care of you and working and getting the groceries and taking care of the kids and making money and paying the bills and fighting the doctors. That's what the heart is saying. And sometimes because you want to blame them and you can't blame them. Don't have a pity party and start feeling like, you know, you're some kind of a, I don't know, vigilante or some holy person or some great person because you're just sacrificing so great. You know what you got to learn how to do? You got to learn how to, if you can get in the shower, get in the shower. If you can get in the tub, if you can go outside, get in there. But when you bedridden and you can't go nowhere, you know what you got to learn how to do? And I'm telling you from experience, you got to learn how to pray and cry. You got to learn how to sob so you don't wake people up. You got to learn how when you get them moments by yourself, I mean, just get dirty, snotty, crying and call out to God and pray and suck it back up. And when your family come in there, you still got to make it through and not tell them it's your fault. And that's why a lot of times I preach to you, it's your responsibility, because no matter what situation is you're in, it is your responsibility. You can't get out of the bed. That's when you learn to start trying to figure out how to have people put stuff next to the bed so you can take your own pills and check off. Remember I told you, write the list of stuff you got to do and check it off because that brain fog and all that stuff you're going through, you're not going to know if you took it or what day it is. So you got to check it off as you go. That's where you learn to say, okay, can you bring me these things and sit them down? I can feed myself when I'm hungry. That's when you got to say, you know what? I can have a nurse come in. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there are some things out there that you deal with that um, you can have a nurse come in and it'll be paid for for you. I'm telling you from experience, I didn't use the nurses because I had a family, but I could have got it. Might have to fight sometimes, but you could get it. So I know there's other things I wanted to cover. We're 13 minutes in, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up. But the number one thing is don't add to the situation by blaming. You don't blame and don't take the blame personal. You got to learn to hear beyond what is said and hear the heart of people. And it doesn't do you no good to complain. It only makes things worse. So don't do it. I hope something in there was helpful for you. Remember in all things, at all times, do you. Until next time, bye.